Well, hello there and welcome back to the Creative Shop Talk podcast. Happy summer, or maybe it's happy winter if you're in the Southern Hemisphere. I know we have listeners from all over the globe, including members in our inner circle from all over the globe. So wherever you are, happy July. This month inside my private coaching group, the Retailers Inner Circle, we're celebrating our wonderful shop owner members with a member appreciation month. I'm kind of excited about it. So we're celebrating and shining a light on all of our members with weekly giveaways. We're doing shout outs, bonus trainings, and some surprises I really don't want to share here, but I'll be sharing with them inside the group. I really love our members. And one way that I wanted to shine a little extra light uh, on them is to highlight some of the fantastic past podcasts that I have done featuring our community stars. Let me just say past podcast is hard to say (laughs) a few times in a row. Anyhow, I wanted to bring back a few of the wonderful episodes that we have done with members and um, replay them. So in case you miss them and or you want to re-listen to them because they are all so valuable. I enjoyed every single one of these. We have so many more episodes. I want to encourage you to go back and listen to any of our podcasts that we've done. I will say probably our most popular podcast posts are always with members. So I also wanted to invite you to start your holiday prep and your Q3 and all of the things that are going on inside your head, I'm sure, right now about getting ready for the holidays and into our Retailers Inner Circle. This is a perfect time to join members like you're going to listen to today and our other fabulous members. I think we have the best online community for independent retail shop owners. I promise you it's a great group. So if you're looking for retail business mentoring from me or from our guest experts. We have tools or and resources. We also have a really supportive peer-to-peer community group. I promise you, we have got you covered. So when you join us, you get access to our seasoned retail community. Again, lots of experience inside the Retailers Inner Circle. You get access to me. You can ask me questions. And once a month, we do live coaching. And But you immediately get access to all our resources. They're literally right there in your back pocket. You can get them anytime you want. We don't fire hose you inside the Retailers Inner Circle with information. You take what you need when you need it and ask questions and move yourself along. So That's been a priority of mine through the entire creation of the Retailers Inner Circle. So you get all our resources, you get my course, Retail Made Simple, which goes through leadership, marketing, operations, planning, and time management, hello, time management, and our also, as I mentioned, our entire retail library that has dozens of masterclasses, we have tools, we have templates, I don't know, we have all the things for you. So we also give our members every month a detailed business playbook. This is packed with social media and email marketing prompts, promotional ideas, operational checklists. There's so many things in there for you. We just revamped this this year. It is fabulous. Our retailers are loving it. We basically did all the thinking for you, which is, you know, I think that's worth a lot. And uh, it's all designed to make your life easier. We also have quarterly editable social media graphics. This takes the hassle out of your social media. So you can just go in, you know, edit them up to make your branding and to fit your branding and then plug them in. So you have a lot, a big chunk of your social media done. So you can schedule those in advance. We have the Q&A call, as I mentioned, with yours truly. I get to chat with you and you can ask me anything. If you can't make it live, you have an opportunity to post your question in a, we have a Google form. You fill that out. I'll answer your question and you can watch it in the replay. You don't have to join us live, although I love that. I will tell you, I love that. We also have our popular holiday success bootcamp. Now, come on, you guys, this is probably one of our most popular things inside the Retailers Inner Circle. I have been doing it for seven years, and this year's even better than before. We've updated it. We're adding promotional, different promotional guides, event planning done for you. Done for you, event planning. We'll we'll 
help you figure all the big chunks out for you. Again, trying to make your life a little bit easier. We've done, we've got the events and promotional ideas and planning for you through January. Basically, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You can use other people's ideas. We can work together. It's just a really profitable. It'll help you be more profitable and easier holiday. So our boot camp's pretty popular and that is included inside the retailer's inner circle. So I've got you. See that? I got all that. So I honestly don't want to talk you into this. I don't want to go on and on about the retailer's inner circle, but I do want you to know how special the group is and how accessible it is. We have a a tuition fee on the front and then a, a low monthly fee so you can just keep getting your your information so you can keep joining us you can keep all of the information the playbook everything so and you can cancel anytime i'm not into at this time right now as i'm recording this we are keeping it month to month i know most groups right now are making you sign up for a year or a long commitment currently we are still allowing month to month and the reason for that is i know things change so i don't want you to feel obligated so it's really a no-brainer in my opinion if you are looking for support so i honestly again originally created the retailers inner circle to help my retail friends who were asking for my help and asking me to create things to help them. That's how it all started. They started joining and everything inside the group has organically grown from things that retailers have asked me to create for them. So everything inside is not just, I think you might need this. It comes from, hey, we need this. Could you get the resources and put them together for us? So that's where all the information and all of the several years now of our Retailers Inner Circle content comes from. There's no perfect time in life, in retail. If you're you're always waiting for the right time and I know you're busy, but retail success really does come down to doing the things that matter. So I would love to see you inside our Retailers Inner Circle. It is designed to equip shop owners just like you to see the success that they want, so that you want. So no matter how much time you have every month, now is in July is a great time to join us. You'll see success. I promise you. I pinky swear promise you. Okay, let's get on with the show. Enough about that. Let's get on with the show. I am excited to um, reintroduce you to some of our fab members. Let me reintroduce you to Susan Mockler and Devin Critella, who are owners of Extending Grace, which is a home decor shop in Hubbards, Ohio. Susan and Devin have been members of the Retailers Inner Circle for a very long time, and I'm so happy to have them inside our group. This episode, they share about being partners in business. It's one of the questions I get asked a lot about going into business with these stars in your eyes about being good friends and then running a successful partnership in retail business. I have seen it go sideways so many times. I think I'm a little skewed sometimes, but today on this episode, we're re-airing we're re it because it's such an important topic. And I love the way they run their partnership, the way they run their business. It is such a joy to watch them work. One of the things that they're going to share with us is, you know, what has worked with with for them in their business, how they manage it, how they structure their partnership. Neither one of them is afraid to speak up. That's a big thing that they they share, you know, openly. And they're both wonderful humans, you know, and there's but there can be issues. So we talk a little bit about that every year. I love this. Every year they get away from their shop. They go for an annual planning retreat that started during COVID when we were actually supposed to have a group retreat and they couldn't make it. So they made their own. And I love that creative initiative. They also share some advice, uh, some some really strong advice. And I think it's something to really pay attention to for advice for friends who want to go into business together. You know, they put everything in writing. They tried working together first because sometimes I've seen partnerships with people who don't even try to work together. And there's a whole bunch of other things that they do. One of the quotes that I love from our interview together was, We plan it, but we write it all in pencil first because our business is flexible. And that is, in a nutshell, what it has to be. You know, it has to be flexible and you have to have a partner that's flexible with you. So I am encouraging you to really listen deeply to this podcast episode. Even if you're not thinking of going into partnership, you know, it's a really great, there's some really great business nuggets on how they run their business. I think you're going to get great joy and great information from listening 
to Susan and Devin, two uh, amazing women. This was originally aired as episode 149, if you ever want to go back, and we'll have their contact information in the show notes. Please go give them a follow at Extending Grace. So let's get on with the show. Thank you, ladies, for being here. I am so excited to introduce you to our listeners today on the Creative Shop Talk podcast. I have such a treat. I think it's really important that we hear real retailers' stories and what's going on behind the scenes. So welcome, ladies from Extending Grace. How are you doing today? Thank you. We're doing well. Very well. (laughs) We're at our annual retreat, so we're having a great time. (laughs) I love that. So can you take a second and maybe, you know, one of you can share your story. I'm going to get both of you actually maybe to share your stories. How, how did your business get started? Let's, let's, let's start from the very beginning. Let's, so let's go back a bit. (laughs) Well, Susan and I have been friends for a really long time, like since 1995, we really started hanging out together. We knew each other for about 10 years before that, but didn't really travel in the same circle. We started a Bible study at one point on Wednesday nights with a few other people. And when the study was done, we still wanted to keep getting together. So we started working on little art projects. And one by one, the other people kind of fell off and Susan and I (laughs) kept doing it. (laughs) And then we had some opportunities to do like some shows, some art shows and take some of our product. It was okay. We never did great. We always had a lot of fun doing it. Yeah. (laughs) And then you went into Darby's after that. Yeah. I I did an antique mall for a couple of years. It was nice because I learned a lot about what to do. And that's where I first learned social media, like how to get involved with that. Mm -hmm. And so then Devin joined me about a year or two later. And then someone said to us once, this shop is opening. Do you ladies want it? And we kind of jumped in. (laughs) So fully prepared and fully with all your retail history and everything going in. Sure. (laughs) Just like everybody else. So tell us a little bit about Extending Grace. Tell us what you do and where you're located. Okay. Extending Grace is located in Hubbard, Ohio. We are right on the Ohio, Pennsylvania line, pretty much. So we serve folks in Northeast Ohio and Western Pennsylvania. We are an antique home decor shop, or or I should say a home decor shop with a focus on antiques, local artists, and and a lot of DIY. Fabulous. So... Okay, so before you open, so we we doing crafts, we go to markets. Your story is very familiar to a lot of people. I mean, it's our hobby right. turned our passion and our hobby right. kind of turned into retail without going to retail school, as we say. Right. Exactly. So, <laughs> so you know, which is again very familiar story to a lot of our listeners. A lot of people are passionate about what they do, and I know that you know a lot of our listeners. And and I should mention, both of you have been inside the retailers inner circle. So. Four, I think right. you've been in four years now, three, four, four years, probably. Yep. Somewhere feels in there, like, yes. Feels like the COVID years kind of like all blurred together. So prior, so let's back up a little bit more. Prior to that, did you have there was no retail experience, I think. Correct. From, correct. I, I worked limited. I worked in mental health, the mental health field for 30 years. I was I did a lot of operational things. It, for a community mental health agency for 30 years. And Devin was an insurance agent. Yeah, so technically <laughs> I was in sales, maybe not from the retail aspect. And then both of us had had little jobs, you know, like retail clothing store jobs and things like that way, way back. Way, way back. Yeah, way back. <laughs> so how, how long have you been friends? It's the I late think. 90s, I yeah, think. Yeah, the late probably. 90s. Yeah. So one of the questions I get asked a lot, and you two always come to mind, is how do two friends go from, you know, making crafts and Bible studies and, and, you know, a little bit to running a full-fledged business together? Because your business is phenomenal. I've watched what you do, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. But you are partners in the business. How does, how does that, what does that look like for you, for the two of you? I think part of what really works well for us and makes us look good on the surface is that our, our <laughs> gifts complement each other. Like Susan is so fantastic at the social media stuff. I can barely stand to get on Facebook, (laughs) but I can, you know, write the checks and pay the bills and do a lot of stuff in the background that she doesn't really care about doing. So that's right. (laughs) Our skill sets work very, very well together. That's right. We we do complement one another. And, you know, I think one of the things Devin and I've learned over the years is that we don't hold things too tightly. So 
we try things and we're open to it, but we're open to saying this isn't working. <laughs> so I think that's how we've been from the start. Yeah. So I think that's helpful. And I don't think either one of us get, I don't want to say job, but it's like, I don't look at something that Susan's doing and go, oh, I could do that better. You know, yeah. it's not, there's not this competition between us. I right. guess would be yeah. a good word. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So you, you both have an end goal of, of, of trust. You know, we both are yes, both yes. doing our best. We're not. Yeah. So what is the format? Are you partners, 50, 50 partners in the business? I'm going to get nitty gritty. It's okay. Yeah, like, right. I don't know. So, so that is a question we get. So how, who makes, who's the CEO? Who makes the decisions? How are decisions made in your partnership agreement? They're definitely made together. Right. Yeah, they are. You know, every once in a while, one of us just on the fly has to do make a decision, make a hard decision, and we do it. Mm -hmm. And I think that trust factor is very helpful, but we always go back around to it. And like I said, if we need to change, we do that. Like mm -hmm. we started Comment Sold mm -hmm. thanks to actually you, Amy, and Amy mm -hmm. listening to it on the podcast. But we thought, well, let's try it. I mean, what could... If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. So we're both very flexible, willing to learn new things, willing to change if it's necessary. And I, we were just talking about this a little while ago. I think the fact that neither one of us really have a strong retail sales background, we're not, you know, we don't look at this and say, well, we've always done it this way, or this is the proper way to do it when you have a retail sales business. You know, we don't have that track we, record. We don't know. <laughs> we wing it really well. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to stop you right there. <laughs> because okay. You know, I'm an anti winger, but it is, I do agree with that, though. I think you're not the only ones, and you know that from our, our groups and, and our conversations, is a lot of us are winging it, but you're winging it with purpose and you have a direction yes. and a goal. Oh, yeah. and, and actually, to that point, what are you doing right now? You want to share with our audience where, where are you and what are you doing right now? I love this so much, and I think people need to pay attention to this. Oh, where are we? Personally, right this well, week. Well, what what are what okay. are you two up to this week? Oh, okay, <laughs> so one of the things that we learned early on from you is that in terms of plan, so we try to have an annual plan each year. Usually in February, we do an annual planning meeting, and because of circumstances this year, we had to push it a little further. But we plan out our entire year, so we look so. We don't fly by the seat of our pants. No, we were, I was, I, I went, I was going to correct you on that because I see what you do, but we were going to get there. Yes. Okay. Right. You so we, you're willing to try things. So that's, right, that's, yeah. that's better. That's a better way of looking at it. Yes. Go ahead. So we're able to line people up for, for events and workshops because we do a lot of workshops, but then we have some of our vendors that come in and do workshops. So we like to get all of that planned and we're flexible enough that if something happens, it's not a big deal, mm -hmm. but we feel really, we feel better prepared if we do this annual retreat. And people say, oh, you just want to get away. Well, that's true. Sure. <laughs> no, it is but true. We, that's we do, it with a per we do it with a purpose. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Part of why we do it too is because both of us have a lot of distractions at home or even if we're at the shop. We can be at the shop and the lights are off and people are knocking on the door, mm -hmm. you know, and we feel obligated to let them in. So this is a way for us to get away from all of our distractions and just focus on the business and and plot for it. And I've learned from Susan to write things down in pencil because there's a lot of times when things change. And <laughs> I, and that's part that. of being flexible is write it in pencil. I love that, write it in pencil. Because, you know, business is flexible. Our life is busy and Right, right. This retail world <laughs> changes a lot. I mean, life changes a lot. Yeah, Fam yeah. Family obligations. So you're, so you you leave, you physically leave, you go to a retreat to a, right. a cabin. We're in a condo up at, up at the lake right now. <laughs> I love that so much. And I think there's a lot to be said for being intentional, distraction-free and intentional about your planning. So I want everybody to listen to that. <laughs> if you're not, if you've drifted off, come back and pay attention to that because I think that is a big key factor. And I love Devin, I love that you said that, write it in pencil. Susan's a smart cookie in that way because <laughs> write it in pencil and that way we can make shifts and changes, but at least we have a direction, like yeah. you said. And I, so let's, so I have another question. When it comes to this planning process that you're working through, we've all done it. We have teams. A lot of us have teams or partners or whatever we're doing, but when it's like partnership and I, and again, I admire the two of you so much. And that's again, why I wanted you to come on and chat with everybody here. 
the decisions. So you've explained, you know, we kind of trust the system. We trust each other to have ideas. So I'm assuming it's a big brainstorming session, rinsing and repeating things that have worked in the past, throwing in new ideas. <laughs> and oh seeing I, throw, I call it throwing it on the whiteboard see what sticks right when when it comes to execution you both have different skill sets you've explained right i love that as well too so what where are the bumps the wiggles are there wonky parts about being part in a partnership have have there been hard bits about being ceos together yes and no i mean sometimes like like devin said i am on social media more than she is i i do our marketing and things yeah. like that. So I'm consuming a lot of ideas. So I'm like, oh, we got to do this, do this. And she's like, Whoa. <laughs> back up the bus. Um, but but then again, you know, I, I give her a lot of credit because she's like, well, okay, we'll try it. And, and I get to be the meanie mo too when it comes to like, <laughs> like we can do this and it's going to cost us so much money. And I go, oh, maybe not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She, she is the budget keeper, which I'm very grateful for because that makes me crazy. Not that I, I don't, I think a budget is, a, is very important, but she does keep me in, she keeps me in place. There. Real <laughs> I well, you know, and I, and I share this often, I believe there's two parts of our, like two big hats that we all have to wear. And I love that you seem to be wearing both of them there. You seem to be managing both of them front of house and back of house and, you know, still right. shared, but there's always the CEO sitting sort of in the back, not that you're not a CEO, Susan, but then there's always, yeah. a, you know, really creative visionary, usually the front. And most of us are the same person, like it's the same. So it's really right. hard to be really right. good at both. So I love how you balance that. And I also love how, how, you know, it doesn't appear to be like big bumps in the roads for, for you two, which I see a lot with partnerships. Do you have any advice for people listening who want to go into business with their bestie or really good friend? Because people get really excited about that. And then, you know, kind of the reality sets in on who does what and how we're going to divide things and paychecks and equal work and all of the right. things, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm a big believer in assuming positive intent, which I know that you do, meaning I assume that Susan's going to have positive intent. I assume that Devin is, you know, when we're coming together, that trust right. thing. But that doesn't always happen in partnerships. Do you have any right. advice for people who might be thinking of doing this about getting it on paper or whatever? Like, what is what is your advice? Well, I, I think getting your partnership on paper is very important. And I'm, you know, but that's always in the back. Mm -hmm. that's there, but that's not something that we, that right. we think about. Right. But I would suggest if people want to go into business together, make sure that you've tried to work together in the past. Mm. When Devin and I were part of one fellowship, we had, there was a cafe at the church that my husband and Devin and I pretty much took care of with some other folks. And we, we know we're back of the house kind of people. We, we like to right. serve so we had worked with each other and then the whole whole craft show kind of thing. But you have to you have to be able to see what your skill sets are together mm -hmm. and if it's going to work. And if you are like, man, I, I'm not comfortable with that. And I like the way she did that. And those little nagging kind of things, I think you need to listen to. Right. That's yeah. important. And in a lot of in a lot of ways, it's like a marriage, you know, and I look at my marriage yeah. as my job is to support my husband and to make him be his best person. Mm -hmm. And his, that's his duty too, is to do that with me. And so I think that we're like that too, is, you know, my job as a partner is to enable Susan to do her best and her job is to enable me. That's why I like that word partner. You know, a lot of people, like my husband doesn't like that word. My son refers to his girlfriend as his partner. And I said, no, to me, that, that gives the sense that they are both moving in the same direction and they're supporting each other. It's not, you know a man and a wife, you think of more of a distinction, but a partnership, you think that you are together. Like right. we are together. We're yes. a team yes. together. <laughs> yeah. No, and, and I, I love that so much. I really do. I think that is a really great analogy. It's like a marriage, right? And we have to all be moving in the same direction. Right. With and again, goal. right. With the common goal. And, and, and again, this is why we're planning, right? We kind of have a common goal. And, and I think that also goes to when I, when I look at how you're operating the two of you, what I see you guys do, you both have a relationship outside of work as well, too. You seem to have maintained, <laughs> you seem to have maintained that from what I know. I mean, your, your family friends as well, you know, you're Almost right. we can't help it, right, at this stage. So I love the I love the advice to make sure you've worked together and have it on have it in paper. I, I'm a have it in writing person. <laughs> like have it in writing. 
for a, a few reasons as well, too. Legal reasons. Right. If something happens to somebody, there's, you know, mm -hmm. life happens to people sometimes. So we have to make sure right. that there's going to be some direction, I guess, at, at that stage, yeah. you know, or what's going to happen. So I thank you for sharing that. I think that that's going to be very helpful to so many people listening. I, I get asked so much about partnerships and is it a good idea? And that is such great advice. I've been part of partnerships. I've had businesses and partnerships that have not gone well. And, you know, again, I'm, sometimes we go in naive. I probably went in naive with mine as far as always assuming positive intent, but that's my nature. So I love that you both have that and have worked together in the past. So great, great, great advice. When it comes to the different shifts that you've made, how do we keep, how do we keep Susan calm down? No. How do we keep that? No, I'm just kidding. How do we keep those ideas? You have had some wonderful ideas over the last, I've seen you change up some things. Things are changing in the retail world all the time, as we know. It's just, it's just the nature of the business anyways. Can you share some of the shifts that you've made? I, I love, I've been watching some great marketing shifts, the comments sold you mentioned. Can you speak a little bit to that? And I, I love watching you two work. And I'm going to encourage anybody to go follow you and see how you're working together at Extending Grace. And we'll have all your links here as well, too. Can you speak a little bit to how that's working and what's working right now for you in your shifts and these new revenue streams and ideas that you have right now? What's working now? Well, what's working now is that folks are, in our area are more prone to sign up Workshops. We've done workshops forever, but people are really interested in them now. They, they, I think they want to be part of something. They, they don't want to just come in and purchase something. They, they like the idea of learning and they like the idea of being able to say they made it. And then we get to hang out with each other. Mm -hmm. We were talking about the fact that we, the thing we never expected when we started this was that we would become such good friends with our customers, mm -hmm. that we would build this community. Community is really important to us, mm -hmm. but it is just, we're just, we just feel like we're just blessed beyond measure because we have made good friends and these friends continue to support us. They support us in workshops. They come to our events. And they've developed relationships with each other yeah. outside of the store. You yeah. know, like, hey, here's my phone number. Call me. Let's go to lunch next week. Yeah. It's just... Yeah, so that's, that's that's really big with us. We're we're finding in, in the last few months, folks are not spending like they were a year or so ago. So we've had to we've had to work on that too. So that's uh, our comments sold. Uh, we always do comments sold live, and we we do you know antiques and vintage and home decor. Sales weren't that great, so we've started to introduce live demos within comments sold. And we've noticed an uptick in our sales mm -hmm. and our, our customers are saying, oh, we love this. <laughs> Do yeah. it again. Yeah. So, yeah. P and people can buy. We, we often talk about this in the inner circle, in the retailers inner circle. People can buy from anybody, but they're choosing to buy from you because they've become, they belong to, <laughs> they're belonging to a community. So right. even as you're growing, again, through the comments sold for anybody who's not familiar with that is a live selling. It's it's like a Facebook platform. live sale. It's a live platform. So you're selling to a larger audience. And I also want to pull out community building is so important. Experiential community building. Mm -hmm. That is a joy bucket for a lot of us, right? Like that is the jo yeah. part of the joy. It's not, we're not selling widgets. Everybody hears me say that a lot. We're not just, let's just sell more things. It's not about that. We are selling things. <laughs> But we yes. can do it with joy and fun. We're making profit. Some of those shifts, let's, can we back up a little bit and can you share some of those shifts when you say we've had to shift, people aren't buying the way they were. So doing the demos on comments sold, love that because it just gets them involved with it. Now they want the products, right? So what other, is there anything else you could share that shift, little shifts? Are you, are you shifting down in product pricing? I don't mean putting your pricing down, but shifting to smaller items what or i don't want to put words well, in your mouth but we <laughs> bought smaller items we i don't think when we started that we really anticipated it, that we would carry a line like we do now right. new right. home decor that's yeah. really yeah. expanded quite a bit and that's great because i feel like now we're we're fairly well rounded like yeah. whoever comes yeah. in the store there's probably going to be something there that they want to purchase even if, you know, it's a 16-year-old girl that doesn't like antiques, you know, we've got other things that are going to be appealing to her. Right. So that's 
that's a shift we've made kind of over the past seven years. Um, yeah, it still has to go with our vibe. Yes, and, it does. and with our with our vendors and our local artists, it still has to do that. So we we think we're pretty picky, but <laughs> <laughs> but sm- people do have been bought buying smaller items. You know, but then some come in and all they want is furniture. So mm-hmm. you know, you kind of have to still have both. Right. Right. So when when we're looking at average order value, just out of curiosity, just to get nosy here now, when we're looking at average order value, what I'm seeing from a lot of other retailers is their average order value is remaining the same, but the quantity is not the same. Or it could be the opposite. We have more people coming in with a little bit lower average order value because we're shifting to maybe workshops or whatever we're shifting to. So hopefully you're overall working out. That's probably true. The latter, the latter is yeah. we're, we're the, the workshops have really been helping to supplement. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And workshops that, build community, right? As, as we said, yeah, so exactly. to me, workshops build loyalty and community and they're so proud and happy to be there. And let's talk about your workshops as well and your revenue stream. Some of the shifts, again, things that you've added. I love the different types of workshops you do. Can you just share a little bit? It's not just creative ones. You have cooking and you have. Oh, food. yes, we do. You have like so, all kinds of really unique things for your community you probably right share a little one bit. one of our vendors bridget from maple leaf acres and she's a baker and trained chef trained chef and she does our jams and jellies that sell within the store mm-hmm. but she also does pasta making workshops she for us she does a flatbread workshop we take people outside and we grill the flatbreads i mean it's just fun people enjoy it and we have visiting folks come in visiting artists come in sometimes and do workshops for us as well. And one of the things we found is that we get, we don't charge at this point in time, we don't charge these folks to do workshops because we feel they are bringing their audience to us and we are providing our audience for them. And so that relationship has worked with our pop-ups, with our visiting instructors. I I think it's worked well Mm -hmm. because we have people coming in here saying, I've never been in here. I've you know, I didn't even know this place existed, but it's because Bridget, who's in another area at a local farmer's market, <laughs> was right. promoting right. the workshop and these people are now in our shop. So, so her following becomes our following. So yeah, I'm powerful. a big believer in collaborate. I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm a big believer in collaborating. And sometimes, you know, we have to charge. It depends on, sometimes, our, on yeah. the outcome, on the outcome. Right. But I love that. And that actually was one of my questions. You know, do you how, you know, how are that, how is that working? So revenue wise, you're bringing in people, introducing a whole new clientele. I mean, that's an mm-hmm. attract strategy extraordinaire, in my opinion. And I love how you promote it again. Your social media is really great. And it, it, why your social media is great. And let me just pull that apart again too. why I say that is because it's inclusive and humanized and, and meaning it just feels good. It makes me feel like I want to just, well, how many times have I said, I want to come? <laughs> There's something yeah. happening <laughs> at Extended Grace. I just want to be there because it's so fun. And you you bring that out into your community. I love that so much. It's not just like, here's an event. <laughs> here's an event poster. You know, it, it just feels good. You do such a great job. Do you ever have, I'm, I, I'm curious, do you ever have regrets of wishing you had started earlier or any doubts about even why you got into this. I'm just, where are your thoughts around that? Well, it's, for me, I, you know, I've been wanting to do this for a long time. You know, I can remember nursing our first child that was over 40 years ago <laughs> and writing down little things, you know, while, <laughs> while I'm feeding her about what I'd like to do. And I, but then I worked 30 years in a, you know, a mental health agency, but I think, you know, I believe that God has placed us and given us our journeys. Mm-hmm. And, and if we partner with him, you know, it, it works. And so I believe the timing was correct. Yes. I wish I could have done it in my twenties or thirties, but it just wasn't the time. So I um, may have starved to death and started her family. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I think from a, from a maturity standpoint and a financial standpoint, at the point we did it, it was probably the best time for us. Right. Wisdom yeah. with wisdom. What do they say? What are they yes. saying there? So yeah. So, yeah. Don't that good stuff. Yes. It's good yourself. <laughs> What's been the hardest part or the scariest? Maybe the scariest is like to jump in, like to jump into working together as partners. Was there ever a really scary moment or you you just trusted from the very beginning? I trusted from the very, very beginning. The, me too. The only thing that really scared me was that there would be a possibility that our friendship would suffer. And it has mm-hmm. not. 
at all. It's the least spark I can tell. It doesn't. <laughs> Going back to the hard part, though, it really wasn't anything to do with the business per se. It's just the balance, trying to balance. Like my husband retired a couple of years ago and Ooh, yeah. he's demanding on my time and I have a new granddaughter that's kind of local. And, you know, it's just you're often being tugged in a lot of different directions and trying to juggle all the plates at the same time. Yeah, I think that's true. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's so true. And I think we should probably all have another podcast on that simply because, (laughs) no, I think it, like, I think it's really true for so many people. We call it the, you know, the messy middle. It's kind of like you're doing your thing now and thriving at it and doing really well Mm -hmm. and enjoying it. But then there's these other competing priorities, right? That right. that are they're right. equally important, and you want to thrive as well. Yeah, I believe I see this. I see this a lot. I want to cry now because I feel like it happens to a lot of us. Like we just, you know, you're so good, the two of you together, and what you're doing, and you have this community, and you're building this beautiful thing because it's your time now. It wasn't the time when you That's were right. nursing babies right. and yeah. raising families. <laughs> And I see this a lot. It's just, an, it's a very common thing. And look, I got goosebumps because I feel like it's so common. And, you know, even looking at, you know, the members of our inner circle, I see, I, again, this is a common thing I see. And then on the other hand, we still, you know, we want joy and fun with our other responsibilities and our yeah. family and our grandbabies. And, you know, so there is that messy middle part, maybe sometimes mm-hmm. about fitting that That's all true. in. But um, I love that you, the two of you work together because that maybe give you gives you a little more balance. So when one's, you know, when one needs to step yeah. away for grandbabies or whatever, there's there's that beautiful synergy, I think, you know, and an ability with your partner to do that. And I, mm-hmm. and I love that. I think there's so, so many benefits to partnership and good partnerships. And I do, Devin, to what you said, the fear of losing your friend is very high on people's fear. Like, you know, what happens if we're, you know, enemies by the end of this? I have seen, I saw two sisters. I worked with two sisters that are barely speaking to each other now who ran a business. So, you know, you have to, you know, you have to do a lot of the wonderful things you're doing. And I I appreciate you sharing that with everybody. I want to honor your time. I I think we could talk all day about this. My curiosity, I always end my podcasts with some rapid fire questions. So if you're game, I'm going to get you both to answer these questions. Give it a shot. All right. Okay. Favorite or current business book, or are you even reading any? You go right in there. I am reading Unreasonable Hospitality by Will Gadara. He's actually a chef. And he owned 11 Madison something, something in New York. It was a very famous restaurant. But this is about how to take all the fantastic things that he did for unreasonable service to go above and beyond for his customers and how to incorporate them into whatever business you have. He actually does speaking engagements around the country on that topic. I'd love to go to one, but they're extremely expensive. <laughs> <laughs> so- how about, how about you, Susan? Do you have a... Well, I, I'm more of a podcast kind of girl, so yeah. I listen to you. Of course. Um, <laughs> really, I find it helpful. I mean, even if these are like little 20-minute segments, I take it a lot and tend to glean. Michael Stelzner is, mm-hmm. is very good. I just, uh, I have learned so much from him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and because he asks the right questions. He asks the questions I would ask. And I I love that about him. So I'm kind of a podcast listener. I love that. Yeah. 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 It's all how we input information, right? But I also see both of you inputting and actioning. So it's not just about input. So thank you for sharing that. And hospitality, that's so interesting. And I know that you both know one of the big things that I've been focusing on this year and reminding retailers is that we don't have you know, customers, we, we should be treating them as a hospitality business. We're in the hospitality business, not the retail business really is what I really think people that get that like you do are going to shift their business this year. I think that we are in the hospitality industry. It's really what we do. So I love that. What's a surprise hidden talent? Either one of you. <laughs> we started, we were laughing about that because we were both former master gardeners so <laughs> i did not know so, this is some former <laughs> well and, and it's really hidden right now right. that talent is really <laughs> hidden because we've you know we focus so much on the store you know we probably don't want you to see our yards <laughs> one of those but, priorities uh, <laughs> have kind of like shifted <laughs> yeah. yeah so that talent is actually hidden but yeah we i don't know i'd say that's the biggest one probably <laughs> probably yeah that's the biggest one I, I love that how do you gather courage when you need it I pray. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I do. I, I pray and I 
seek help from my friends. Mm-hmm. And, and I often have to do that. So yeah. you can't be afraid to ask for help or to ask for advice from people that you trust. That, that's wisdom. <laughs> that's it is. Wisdom. It's, it's daunting sometimes. It's definitely daunting, but you have to be willing to ask questions and hard questions. Mm-hmm. Or like, admit, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. Can you help me? So Yeah. Well, I, and to that point, I don't think any of us know everything. I mean, no, nobody does. Absolutely. There's nobody that builds a business alone. So, you know, you have to lean into asking for help. And I think those that do that, you see get out of those ruts a lot quicker and move on yeah. and you know we just don't have time for that anymore we have grandbabies and right <laughs> businesses to run so we just need to lean in and get the help and leapfrog over all that those obstacles so i love that thanks for sharing that as an entrepreneur were you born with it or did you learn to become one i learned to become one uh, i think i'm still learning you know something i always wanted to do but I was going to say, it sounds like when you were nursing those babies, you were thinking yeah. about well, it. Yeah. I, want, I wanted to do it, but I had no idea what to do. And I was always afraid that if I left my job, but what, what about healthcare? What about all these things? Mm-hmm. Until someone once said to me, what are you going to do when, if, if God ever says to you, you know, I gave you this opportunity, why didn't you take it? And well, because I needed health insurance. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, did I miss this whole thing because I was so afraid I was yeah. going to yeah. lose my health insurance? And I was for a year or so without traditional health insurance, but it all worked out. I mean, I had some form and it, I figured it out. Mm -hmm. So for those that think they can't do something because of an obstacle, I mean, sometimes those obstacles are real, but sometimes you can figure it out Mm -hmm. and still do it. So, yeah, but I have had to learn a lot. That's That's great (laughs) advice. I've been an entrepreneur for 25 years. I'm still. (laughs) <laughs> but, you know, it, but I love that. Thank you for sharing that about, you know, the obstacles, because we can argue our limitations every day, mm-hmm. right, about why we can't do something. Right. That's that to me is kind of the entrepreneurial. The opposite of that is the entrepreneurial spirit. So how can we work it? How can we make this happen? What can what can that look like? Which is mm-hmm. what you did, right? What could that partnership mm-hmm. look like? What could this business look like? How could we make it work with health insurance and you know, I think having a, a joy filled passion and it's not we all know everybody listening to this podcast knows that it's not this joy filled <laughs> Shangri-La moment running retail businesses for sure. But there's a lot of joy in this community and yeah. and, and watching you two work and laugh together is is a joy to me. I, I hope it is for you. It seems to be for you. Yes, very much. <laughs> Yeah, I, I heard a giggle fit. I just want to share this as we wrap up. But I heard a giggle fit one time when you were doing your comments so old. And you were both, sorry, it was a while ago. It was before Christmas, I think. And you were both laughing. And it was just such joy. And then you could see people in the comments. Like, you know, it was just, I. The, it's just joy filled. And that's part of building community as well, too. So, so thank you, ladies. Anything else you'd like to share? What's next? What's going on? Anything exciting that you'd like to share with our audience about what's happening right now or coming up? Uh, we do have a great community thing that was kind of very instrumental in starting about six or seven years ago. Shop Small Hubbard. So yeah. we work yeah, we work right. closely with other um, merchants and stuff. That was that was tough going because in our in our area, people kept saying, "Well, if you're not from Hubbard, it's not going to work." But it, it has, and our community has embraced us, mm-hmm. and we we enjoyed that a lot. Yeah. Okay. So I have a funny, really quick story to tell you about that. I live in a near a community called Hubbard's. And at one point in time, this is really, this is a true story. It's so funny. I saw this post pop up from somebody here in Nova Scotia, where I live in Hubbard's, Nova Scotia. I don't live in Hubbard's, but anyhow, it, all close enough. And somebody popped up, look at this great event happening in Hubbard's. <laughs> Your oh, that's funny. It was one of your posts. And it, I was like, I was so confused. <laughs> so I was like, <laughs> I know you. I knew I, I knew what you were doing with this shop Hubbard's. And anyway, I thought it was so funny. And then somebody was like, well, where is this? I don't, that doesn't make sense. This isn't a store from locally. And then I had to type in like, this is not Hubbard's Nova Scotia. <laughs> so anyway, so you're famous now. You're Hubbard's. Oh, you're internationally now. You're, 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 you're internationally known. Your event is now internationally owned or known. So I just thought it was so confusing and fun at the same time so I, I meant well, to thank share you. that with you so 
Great. Thank you, ladies, so much for being here. I think what you've shared is going to be so helpful to other retailers listening about partnerships and community building and so many things. And I, I'm so grateful to have you in our Retailers Inner Circle community. And I'm thank so you. excited that you said yes when I asked you to come on the podcast with me today. So thank you for taking time out of your retreat, your planning retreat as well. So thank our you, pleasure. ladies. Thank you. Great. Thanks for having us. Well, that's it for this week's episode of the Creative Shop Talk podcast. I'm so glad that you're here to join us this week, and I hope you found value in what we're sharing here. I want to remind you that our website has all of the show notes. You can find it at wendybatten.com slash podcast. Everything that you need to hear about today's podcast is there. Also an opportunity if you need to reach out to me. If I can support you in any way whatsoever, please feel free to reach out. So thanks for joining us. Please leave a review, subscribe if you can, and never miss an episode. We hope to see you back here again next week. Thanks, my friend. Have a great week. Bye.